Ali. This is E Excalibur issue 94 by Warren Fallis. It came out in 1996, and this is an odd little issue. It is setting up a storyline that never gets told. It has got a cliffhanger ending that is never resolved. Warren Fallis, he left the book in about 10 or 12 issues time, and this is never referred to again. This story and even this cover, it is inspired by days of past, present and futures, except with the E. Excalibur characters. In general, I didn't like Warren Fallis. I often point to him as the miserable, cynical, comic-hating sort of writer that I have immense contempt for. But to echo what I said in my review of the issue before this one, I do find most of his E. Excalibur work to be some of his less loathsome work. There's still one huge problem with his run on this book, and that is that he added a fucking self-insert character as the team's leader, and had him straight away start banging the underage Buffy Pride, which is very suspect. This is the team for this run, though. We have got... Hermione Granger, the Smurf, Buffy Pride, Steel Man, fucking Warren Fallis, Wolf's Girl, Morgan, Cyber. This is when he was brought back from the dead by the Borg as a Robo Zumba thing. Captain Britain, and these two here are our supporting characters. We've got Bor and Myra, and this guy, he is pretty interesting, but. He doesn't really appear all that much outside of this run. If you replace Warren Fallis here with someone else, uh, let's think. Um, if you replace them with Squealy, yeah, Squealy, I reckon this would be a great team. Anyway, most of these characters are not in this issue. We're instead in a far off future dystopia of 2013. And it's like days of past, present and futures. And the evil fascist government, they have driven E. Excalibur underground, literally. And they are using Captain Britain's Britain Cave as their base. And here is Wolf's Girl, and in this dystopian future, she has had a bad haircut. She is also cold and detached and atheist now, bringing her more in line with Warren Fallis. Then our here, we have got Fetish Fuel, who is always welcome in any comic or in my house. She is not normally in E. Excalibur much, but she does fit in with the team well enough. Then we have got an advert for some absolute rubbish. And now we are introduced to an all-new character. They were bigging her up and teasing her in the back of issue 93. This is the new character called Tangerine. God, where did they get their wacky names from? Tangerine, she is a psychic and another borderline pastiche of a Warren Fallis character. All she's really missing is a cigarette constantly affixed to her mouth. Uh, what's bonkers is... Last issue, they really did tease this character like she was going to be exciting or a prominent character. But since Warren Fallis never got back to this story, Tangerine, she doesn't appear again until 2010. And even then, it's just one page in a Captain Britain comic. Speaking of, here is Captain Britain and Morgan. And you know this is a dystopian future because Morgan has cut her hair short. So, at this point, you're probably thinking that Warren Fallis, he has quite cleverly cut the group down, but to spit it back in your face, of course, here is his self-insert character. He has survived, and he has now literally been forcibly compared to Dr. X. The team, they have gotten a lead on where Cyber has disappeared to. He vanished years ago and they think he has been held prisoner by the evil fascist government. Uh, we've also got Korma from the New Muties. And she actually does nothing here. Well, she does. She does this. But since we never got a follow-up to this, this is so pointless. We have this whole thing with her possessing Captain Britain. 
uh, well, not possessing him, using him as her eyes. Like, she's not controlling them. She's just, like, seeing things through his eyes. But it's not referred to again in this issue, and it goes nowhere. None of this goes anywhere. And considering 2013 was seven years ago, I'm starting to think we are never going to get a sequel to this one random issue of Excalibur from 1996. So the team, they set off to locate Cyber. It was a good action shot of Captain Britain and Morgan. Although you would never in a million years guess that that was Morgan. She has been remodelled in the vein of a typical Warren Fallis character. Uh, one other thing that bugs me is Captain Britain's helmet. Look, it is coloured correctly here. But then, on the cover, it is not. It is coloured blue when it's meant to be red. Just a little thing that drives us mad. So they go into this evil fascist government base and then the walls come to life and they start fighting the evil fascist government walls. And if you think this idea is crazy, on the next page there is a brain in a jar that functions as a door lock. Fetish Fuel stabs it with her psychic dagger thing. And this little team we've got here, Captain Britain, Morgan, Wolf's Girl, Fetish Fuel and Tangerine. They do make an interesting group. I would have liked to see more of them. Uh, I think Fetish Fuel, she is a clever addition to the team since she is Captain Britain's little sister. And, well, you're never going to hear me complain about her TNA. And Tangerine, she probably would have ended up being... A terrible, snotty, cynical Warren Fallis character. But we will never know. And get prepared for a sudden ending and a cliffhanger. Because the team, they find Cyber. And he has been like taken apart and dissected by the evil fascist government. And he has been used to power all the evil fascist government's computer networks. And just as AX Scalba make this discovery... Their infiltration is found out and some soldiers arrive with big guns. And then in the present, Captain Britain wakes up having remembered this future just like Buffy Pride did in the original days of past, present and futures. It's his end there and that is fitting because this indeed is the end of this story. We never know what happens next and Captain Britain, he must have just decided it was a random dream. And back then, right, they had a letters page that was three pages long. They barely even bother with letters columns now. This is a promising story and some decent setup. It's just disappointing that it is never followed up on anyway. I doubt there is even fan fiction that sets out to resolve this long forgotten story. The next issue is just in the present day again. In Captain Britain, he doesn't mention having any memories of a dark future that he has got to prevent. With that huge caveat about this never being finished, I rate this one a very reserved seven thumbs up.